artist. I want to ask y'all, are y'all being creative with your experiences that you offer for your fans? Managers, are y'all pushing creativity when it comes to your fan experiences with your artists? Because my guy Omarion, Mr. O himself, he he's doing a little something. I want to share this and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk. I had a little ad that passed my page. You know, I don't know why Omarion was targeting me, how I fell into that subset. Yeah. Oh, maybe because I'm in. I was in. Oh yeah, Atlanta. You know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He's probably just generalizing. All right. But check this out. Right. For those of you who cannot see and y'all are just listening, this says the O experience, mind, body, and beyond. Ah, yeah, clever. <laughs> Show dates eleven oh six in Atlanta. You got the DMV. He's going to New York and he's going to Philadelphia. Right. Uh, artist uh omarion is an established artist but this is different than that type of experience he says the ultimate connection private exclusive oh uh, and they spell connection like kinetic you know in motion this oh, is spiritual yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah i was yeah, wondering get, about that i ain't gonna get, lie get, <laughs> I was a little nervous oh uh, you didn't give him the benefit of the doubt <laughs> no, bro i did you not was, i did not <laughs> that was a typo <laughs> all right the ultimate the ultimate connection <laughs> private exclusive session with omarion tickets available and it's 250 250 per ticket now we know omarion is not an artist that people are really paying two fifty to go to his show. These, I mean, who who are people paying two fifty to go to their show these days? I just learned that you know Paramore, the band, and was way yeah. off them. They're they're charging four hundred for their show at the Tabernacle. Four hundred. Yeah, that's what I learned. That's what Taj told me last night. Sheesh. Exactly. So hey. so apparently them. Apparently them. Um. Other than that, I can't think of nobody else. I mean, I'm pretty sure probably like the Kendrick's Drake's, you know, the, the super high level. Act. But that's not even the low. There are still tickets lower, right? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. They usually have at least like an $80, $90 one that's there what I'm somewhere. Saying. You know, you're in the back. So, Omarion <laughs> isn't somebody you would expect to be able to charge $250 for a show, but this is m- m- uh, more than a show, right? So, yeah. to give you all a little bit more context, right? It says limited ticket is available also on the flyer. Um, the O experience, mind, body, and beyond, the ultimate connection must have a ticket to the event all sales are final you will receive details on the secret location via email ah, okay. three to four okay. days before the event ah that this is what i love right this is how you create a little mystery but at the same time say hey we ain't figured this thing out yet <laughs> and we're not gonna book our our spot until we figure out how many tickets we sell <laughs> but i get it i get it i love it i love it so you flip your weaknesses and, and, and use it as marketing find uh, as a marketing strength that's the game originals i guess that's what omarion takes you on the ultimate experience Elevating your mind, body, and beyond. Okay, give me some more. Go one-on-one with the king. Okay, so there's some one-on-one aspect to this. Okay. He's the king of unbothered. When did he get that title? He- hey, man. <laughs> I, was, I was about to ask you that. What does that even mean? I, hey. I mean, he has been pretty chill recently. Like, well, he's always been chill, though. He's yeah. never been like a super out there guy, right? I, yeah, kind of like he he's been relatively chill for still yeah. having to be yeah. out there as a celebrity. I, I I give him that, and then there's a lot of stuff going on like with the group. Yeah, but he's still uh, tried shit, to yeah. kind of. Man, he's just trying to claim the title for somebody yeah. else. Like, that's yeah, what I'm gonna talk about too. Like, he's like, nah, that's me. Let me get okay. that. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Unbothered in this intimate healing experience. This isn't a show. This is a healing experience as he shares gems on mindfulness principles and practices on how to choose your joy and live an unbothered life oh i love it the branding on it so he might be branding himself as unbothered king of what you know whatever yeah and now he's reinforcing <laughs> what that means he's motivational speaking to his audience that's all that's happening that's how i'm, I'm taking this right yeah, he's giving real shaman vibes right now Ex- now we're getting into the details okay you, this unique session includes a personalized autographed copy of unbothered the power of choosing joy i'm assuming that's a book i was just about i was like that's a long name for oh, an album it gotta yeah, be a book it gotta be gotta- <laughs> right appetizing cuisine we, okay. we gonna feed you sound it. bath healing i don't know if y'all know about that sound bath you know um you know about the sound bath right no oh man the girls you date bro you know i never even took me to a sound bath healing. <laughs> apparently i'm in the wrong Yo- the wrong damn pool, bro. You don't gotta you don't even gotta <laughs> go to the south. All right. I'm about to look this up. Right. Said, like I was missing out. Like I'm like, man, I need to know now. It's, it, nah, it, it's some it's some LA girl shit for sure. 
they they're big on this type of stuff. Here go Janae Iko doing a sound bath. This time we'll take it slow. So take it, like really it what it says, you just like a like a bathhouse oh. type of thing while music is playing. You don't have to have all that going. Now she's uh, she's singing. Hold up, hold up. I'm gonna find this real quick. We're gonna get to the point of <laughs> of this whole thing, <laughs> but it might take me. I'm trying to find out what that's like. Nah, sound baths are more like they got a little bowl. Here we How go. would you like to turn your I know innate Janae passion Eichel, she for does helping sound other for people sure, into wanna, a prosperous like part? Get lost in the rest of her SEO. Yeah, that, seemed like, that seemed like her vibe. Yeah. It's all it is, bro. Oh, I have seen this before. Uh-huh. I've never been to one, but I've seen it before. You can buy them on Amazon for like 30 or whatever and just, you just, you know, scoop that thing on around and, and, and do it. work. So, do it work? I mean, I ain't. I haven't done it. For oh, you myself. haven't done it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You okay. know, my my girl requested. I just got it for a gift, so it worked for me <laughs> to get what I wanted out of it. <laughs> but, I, but I didn't do no sound bath. I will tell you that. <laughs> Limited space on only thirty tickets available. Okay. Only About. thirty. So he he legit making it limited. Let me let's go ahead and do the math. I don't even want to do it in my head right now. About 80, 80 bands, maybe. Not eighty, bro. Maybe, maybe, not a little. I don't know, man. I don't feel like doing the math. Yeah, somewhere uh, seven thousand five hundred. Now that's interesting. That's not enough. I would think to bring out Omarion. Yeah, well, right? I think it would be more than that. Yeah, we're breaking this down in real time, but again, we're gonna get to the subject. You will receive details on a secret location via email again. So, all right. So this is basically a high ticket event, a higher ticket. I'll consider it more middle ticket, and this is um, something that a lot more artists should consider not necessarily this yeah. right but you have these different experiences that you can do that aren't a part of a show and the only thing that we see typically is the funnel if i have a concert and you can pay me a little bit more to see me backstage all these other things variations of things that i can do while i'm there right it's yeah. a pop-up marketing funnel there i bet he's gonna have some kind of marketing funnel at within this event too 100 right? it's, it's gonna like, be merch right, you pay here but yeah there's some additional merch yeah I bet he he could probably squeak in another twenty bands out of this event. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Some way, probably like, gonna be food vendors that he own or something there. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, <laughs> like, like, his own. Yeah, advertising a brand. There's more <laughs> to it, so we're gonna get that benefit of doubt because I'm pretty sure there is. Because I don't think Omarion's just stepping out for seventy five hundred. Not that he is not enough. He doesn't do walkouts, walkthroughs, and stuff like that. That he might get something like that here and there. Yeah, but still, putting up a whole event. I would expect him to have um, to want more. But one, he might do this could be a prototype for a branding experience yeah, that he wants one. to build on. Yeah. Right. You get the footage, but you just try to break even. But then also, I think there's a marketing funnel. But the point is, uh, how creative are you guys getting with your audience? Because we need to see more of this. All right. We need to be see, see more of this. Everybody doesn't have the audience yet. But if you have an audience, right, a show is cool and all. All right, but I'm still disappointed by what I've seen the the lack of creativity I've seen since the pandemic. Right, you would think, oh, pandemic's happening, people are gonna get deeper into these virtual experiences. They're gonna become more of a real thing. That was very much of a trend that didn't get utilized enough. Yeah, still hasn't got u- utilized yeah. correctly, and then people went right back to the same system. Yeah, after yeah. them over, oh, we just about to wait for these shows. What's back? <laughs> Finally, it's back. Yeah, it's like all that time, and the wake up call wasn't real. I'm not saying don't maximize what you can in this vertical of touring that's already established, because the industry has a lot that pushes you in that way. And go ahead and get that money, but you should at least start thinking a lot more about monetizing outside of that. So this is one experience we talked about. Well, you know, we both know Kari did that really dope show during yeah, the live stream show. Yeah. yeah, live stream show yeah. during the uh the pandemic. But again, he did it in an extremely dope way, right? It was yeah. branded. It was uh what is it called? The weird the, this is weird live stream or something? It's, it's it something like that. Yeah. Kari, forgive us if you ever hear this that that we aren't remembering it. But <laughs> But like his whole experience was detailed where it was a variety show yep. vibe. Games. So I'm an artist. Obviously, you follow me, but I'm going to play games live on the live stream. Um, obviously, he performs and his whole branding of dropping his ads, which we, maybe we pull that up or something. But like 
it, it felt like the theme for a TV show, right? Mm-hmm. It was thoughtful commercials. Yeah, it, let's put it that way. It's definitely something like I think if he had wanted to keep it going, he set it up in a in a great way to it could have turned into a series or exactly. a real show. It could have become an entire yeah. continued series and experience that his fan base is happy to feel a part of, right? Yeah. It could just be a one a year thing, kind of like so. If you look at Travis Scott with Astro World, right? Yeah. And that was themed, obviously had the album part of it as well. That whole thing was amazing. But, you know, the fans more and more come every single year. Yep. Of course, it's a festival and that's something more specific. But you can do that with these side concepts because what it also gives you a way, you can build a brand using your brand that becomes interesting in and of itself that you don't get to market when you're doing your music. Yeah. Like, Oh, a variety show at this point, people might just come because it's really fun. Yeah. Right. Like next time around, I'm going to bring my fan, my friends because the shit was dope. It was funny. Yeah. It was cool. Who cares who Kari is? And then next thing you know, you might learn, you come closer to Kari as a part of the process. Or even if you don't, Kari still got your money. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. right. So like that type of thing, there's so many ways to, to do that with these side experiences. Let me take a quick second to say, if you're an artist trying to blow your music up, or if you're a manager, a music professional in general, trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you, and it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply. It's completely free. But the thing is, We're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. So I go Marion with this. He's hitting this entire fan base, right? Next thing you know, he starts to invite sound healers or... Mm. Or shaman or whatever speaks to that fan base. Have little motivational panels panels yeah. right exactly <laughs> and he's no longer even the center of it it's just a concept yeah. almost like a festival or a seminar or a conference or whatever and now you can probably charge more and more and more and again he was just the foundation of it so this is a great way to use yourself not only to monetize your fan base in a different way right but also to set the foundation of a brand that started as adjacent to you but you're attacking a vertical that Hey, we know to be honest, you can monetize a lot e- more easily than you can in the music space. Yeah, yeah, because people will pay for things to do a lot faster than they'll pay for music, right? You kind of mm-hmm. you internalize it differently, you justify it differently, right? Like, yep. oh, this is an experience. I get memories. This show, yep. this song is a song, right? And I'm already kind of thinking of the comments for this, and I know the next question is probably going to be like, but how? You know, what I'm saying, how do we? how we make these cool experiences for these mm. people that's happened to us. And the, the biggest thing that I've seen with these artists is they just doing shit they was gonna do anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like, And they're like, hey, how can I like sell my fans on being a part of this thing that I probably was gonna wake up and do anyway today, right? I was already gonna go to a sound spa, right? Yeah. I remember when, um, you no, know, gotta go, gotta go back to the king. You know what I'm saying? I remember when Lil Yachty was first going on tour, uh, and he had this experience no, with no, like, no, maybe didn't. <laughs> you know, good damn well, I did not know you were about to say Lil Yachty when you said that. <laughs> Shout out to Yachty, bro. He had this really, this really early tour experience where like you could just hang out with him and eat pizza and play like Uno or something. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Rory, you know Rory is right, like from Atlanta. Oh, that. Oh yeah, that Rory. That Rory. Yeah. He has the whole like in the woods thing, and I, I feel like, yeah, I feel like he just hangs out in the woods anyway it's probably like his vibe right so mm-hmm. i'm saying what artists are like hey like what what is something that i like to do that i can put together see who else in my base is, is interested in it and then from that either i i keep doing it mm-hmm. right or i pivot and i'll be like okay they don't like playing uno well maybe next time i have like a big space game or something you know what i'm saying but i, I think it, it goes back to like just like what else are you interested in outside of music you know what i'm saying like what else do you like to do what yep. do you care about or what have you heard your fans tell you they like to do? Like what do they seem like they will possibly be in based on like the interactions and conversations you've had with them? So like, the Amario thing makes a lot of sense because he's he's older, so he's probably at this point in his life where you know he's he's getting himself together, 
spiritually, man. You know, I'm undoing all the stuff that he done done. Yeah, when he was younger, you know, like <laughs> that plus thirty, that thirty five plus mindset, man. Oh, I gotta get shit together now, right? Yeah, so it's probably yeah. shit like he like he looks like he does stuff like this anyway. Yeah, I mean, especially in his picture. Yeah, bro. I know it was built for that, but he looked like Black Aladdin right here. But he should have charged like if it was me, it was me. I would have had the two fifty one. Mm -hmm. I would have had like a. Five hundred dollar, maybe seven fifty, like guided meditation group where I got, like you can you can come be here for this price, but then maybe five of y'all can get this extra ticket. Have you ever seen that? That might, that might be there. That's what I'm saying. That's the that might be the invisible funnel, and now that I have you in this peer pressure space. Oh uh, yeah, I get you saying. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm <laughs> yeah. you yeah. everything here. Right, it's controlled to make you want a little bit more, and then I'm like, oh, like I ain't trying to scare you away with yeah, the price. Yeah, I'm not trying to scare you away with these additional <laughs> prices, but I already got that two fifty for you. We're already here, and now you're spending separately because you forgot about the two fifty. You spent it already. Yeah. Now you're just spending five hundred or whatever that that yeah. new number is. Yeah. So that's that's what you might be doing. Yeah, I hope so because, like you said, bro, seven seventy five hundred. I mean, I guess it's what thirty bands for the whole for the whole set, but. Like you said, that has to be something deep. But there's no way he's traveling to all these. I mean, I guess they're all not that far. New York to Philly, Philly to DMV. Well, no, because Atlanta's first. So Atlanta to DMV, DMV to New York, and then back down to Philly. There's no way he's putting all these travel arrangements together without some type of yeah. upsell in the funnel or something. You know what yeah. I'm saying? No way. No yeah. way. I might have to look deeper. I wonder if he already has, like, shows in those cities at the time and stuff like that. That'd be cool. That'd be interesting. But, but yeah, I think. What you said is a good start, right? Like, just what are you doing? Yeah. Already. What do you like? And then there's different levels of it, right? So you have your your fan base, music, the main thing they know you for and they come to you for. Now you can take what you like and then figure out what level do I want to introduce this to my fans with. All right. So, yeah, you said Uno. We could do some kind of private Uno experience or yeah. whatever. Go hard with it. But I also could just play Uno versus a fan on live, right? And it's yeah. free and just another way to connect with them and build with them, right? Then, or I could play Super Smash Bros, right, yeah. live. But then I also could host the whole Super Smash Bros tournament, yeah. right? And have them involved and then, you know, run that whole thing up, yeah. right? Then there could be, I don't know what it, I don't even know what it is. Well, there's a virtual live, I mean, a virtual tournament, Right. Yeah. But then you can do a real life tournament. Right. And each of those come with their own different charges and extra things you can do around it. But it all comes from that same idea. of This is just another thing I do or like no name. I think she had a book club. Years yeah. Ago, yeah, she did. Right? Yeah. Something like that. Right. Yeah. And then you think about this. I, I have this audience that is reading books with me. Right. You might always think, well, where's the angle I can monetize? Well, she might then in the future. I recommend books based on authors paying her because they know that she has this clout among people who actually are book uh, buyers. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. have like an email list to blast and get sales or get affiliates or people are paying you with advertising costs. Bring that speaker in. All right. And there's other ways and people might have private experiences. Again, you get into the in-person thing. The in-person thing is always going to be big in an environment that, we're divided in this digital space. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's always going to be a thing. So it's the stuff that you like and then it's the stuff that is just a special experience as a whole. Like, you know, when Ryan Leslie did the whole castle experience, you know? I don't um, think so. Yeah, so he, I don't know how many times he did it, but I know at least one time for sure because, you know, he has super phone. He's able to hit up his his you know most real fans and they did a private experience where he did a show in a castle oh shit yeah show <laughs> in a castle you know black tie like real like upper tier yeah real James swanky, Bondi, swanky. Yeah, yeah, real like swanky some, yeah. yeah like some of that type of stuff and it was a private show for those people and you put them in this space that you know, they're not used to being to that level of experience. That's a whole nother thing, right? It's one thing to just do something cool and private that brings them closer to you, but another thing to do something that just takes them into a space and gives them access that they normally don't have. Yeah. You know and, what I mean? And I think the opportunity to be around you. Like a lot of fans just That's value like being in your vicinity. Oh, I might. There's a there's a high chance I could have a conversation with him 
much easier to think that when you're in a room full of 30 people than in a room full of 3,000, right? Even if they don't really get to talk to you or never touch you or whatever, like they still think it going into mm -hmm. it. And a lot of people are kind of buying to that stuff. Like I had a homie, um, Tom one time was going to throw like a kickball game at Piedmont. And he was going to charge for it, have his fans come out. There were fans who were going to like fly out here. Fly there, and I thought it was crazy, but like they're, they're going to fly from wherever they are mm -hmm. to Atlanta for a kickball game. Yeah. That's how much they like this man. He ended up not doing it. Uh, I can't remember. The, I think it was like just logistical reasons. You know, Piedmont, man. He'd be paper, shit you got to go through to get them to do it. But yeah. that was when it clicked to me. Because I was like, man, bro, he got at least like 10, 15 people talking about, like, yo, when is it? I'll get my hotel. I'll fly out, right? And I don't think he was charging nothing crazy for it. I think he could maybe do like twenty, twenty five dollars to sign up. You know, you get put on your teams once you actually it might have even been free. You no, know I think I think he's gonna do some free shit and just sell like merch and stuff at it, you know, like use it kinda like a free funnel. Come play the game. Or he could have had a, a special like Tom Kickball. shirt. Oh yeah. sorry, yeah. For the teams, yeah. right? Yeah, you know, actually, so, yeah. That's a that's true memorabilia to move forward yeah. with. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like not purchasable. Of course, you have your regular merch that everybody has access to, but only y'all have this specific thing. Yeah, yeah. So that's flex in the fan base. Shit. Yeah, that's a, a flex in the fan base, yeah. and that's that's exactly what you want to do. Give opportunities to your fan base members to flex on yeah. other fan. That's bases. all they want, bro. They just want to be like, hey, you a fan? I'm a bigger fan because I have, like you said, this exclusive T-shirt. Mm -hmm. The only way you could get this shit is if you pulled up to Atlanta on October, whatever, at 9 a.m. and played this game, and you weren't there, but I was. That's why yes. I got this shit. Yes. So I am better than you as a fan. But <laughs> a good way to think about that too is NFTs, right? Mm. If you listen to a lot of the experiences people thought to make around NFTs and say, oh, well, this is going to become possible. Most of that shit is possible. Yeah. Right? The metaverse and all that, all that stuff they applied it to, okay, that still has to build out and yeah, that's going to become possible. But doing these exclusive events, having special ways to know how, if you can get in, whether it's a password, whether it's a, a specific card or your name's in a database, it's a list. All that exists. You can already do that. Yeah. The symbols, like you said, um, like flex on the fan base with the t-shirt, all those abilities and possibilities already exist. For some reason, though, it just takes people to like have that new outlet to actually see the possibilities yeah. for some reason. I, mean, I think people just like they're intimidated by trying to make it work in an in old space. Mm -hmm. But it's like the old space has already proven that there are people that are willing to get it. The new space is the shit you should be scared of because it's like, yeah, it's new. There's new right. opportunity. You could cap. Right. But there also could not be people there that are looking for what, you, what mm -hmm. you're trying to offer yet. Yeah. So that's what I think it comes down to, bro. Like, I can yeah. see that. So yeah. you're afraid, but now that everything sounds like this is built to support that, you feel like there's a lower chance of failure and it's still in such a new space. If I fail, it doesn't look as bad than me failing in the real world. Yeah, exactly. Because it's like there's not a lot of people here yet, so it's like if it doesn't hit, it's like it's like running a bad ad on Facebook versus running a bad ad on like a new platform. It's like if it doesn't hit on a new platform, there's not enough people that know you fucked up. But Facebook, yeah. it's like there are hundreds of thousands, maybe <laughs> millions of people that saw your bad. Ad. So I, I think that it kind of comes down to like that same thinking. It's right. like oh, I have the chance to like cap over here really hard, which is true. Mm -hmm. um, I have the, the chance to be, you know, we talked in the last episode to be able to say I was the first person to do X, Y, Z in whatever space, right? So that's a narrative in itself. Yep. Um, but then also, like, there's less eyes on me if I fuck up. And if it goes <laughs> bad, I can just act like it never happened because nobody was over here anyway paying attention to it. That's a <laughs> huge limitation when it comes to a lot of artists and potential embarrassment. Yeah. You know, I don't know if that's part of insecurity that comes with not that's a lot of people in general, but especially the personality type who wants to be an artist. Yeah. Right. But a lot of conversations that I have with artists, there's a, a, a lot of barriers or limiting beliefs that come up around embarrassment of some sort. Yeah. Which is weird because you're supposed to want to stick out. Right. And part of the stick out risk is embarrassing. Also. Potential embarrassment, <laughs> potential embarrassment. There's this, this concept, right. That most people actually do not want to stand out mm. most people not to think about artists that's why we probably put certain people on a pedestal all right just because they are standing out and we innately understand that there's danger with standing out right and that's why the crowd doesn't want to stand out mm. right because if i'm out there it's a risk i it's just me out here right yes there's a lot of rewards that come with it taking that risk 
if you happen to survive out there, but most people don't survive out there. All right. So you look at zebras and I think it was, uh, what's his name? Jordan Peterson. That was, uh, talking about this that I heard. He was talking about how zebras are, you know, they're striped. Mm -hmm. So you're like, well, how is that built for camouflage? Right. It's like the lions in the Sahara are more camouflaged with the backdrop than zebras are. Mm -hmm. Right. But they move in these herds. So they're more camouflaged amongst each other. Right. And they're not standing out. The, re the way a lion identifies them is because especially, you know, lions oftentimes they attack together. Mm. Right. Oh, this one got a, a hobbling leg. They can barely move or, or that one's bleeding. Yeah. So we can all agree that we're chasing this one. But when all of them are good. You just keep lost. You keep you get lost. Yeah. Like, oh, I was chasing that one. I, was, I thought we were chasing that one, bro. I was like, no, nah, man. I'm yeah. right here. <laughs> like, what's going on? So, like that risk of standing out, right? That's how we translate that to humans. Yeah. It's like people wait. Want to people say there's this innate feeling? I think a lot of times people want the rewards of standing out, but then that risk just to actually do it. You know, oh shoot, you gonna get canceled? You gonna get whatever, whatever, whatever? Yeah. People gonna it's, walk up to you in public. Yeah, people walk up to you in public, and yeah. it's a weird feeling. I, mean, I know the first time you experience like all of that is just like a weird crazy. thing when people, yeah. are, oh, what's up? And you like, do I know you? Yeah. What's up? Yeah. You know, <laughs> dang, these people they see me before I see them. Yeah, I don't bro. Even know that, it's, that's, it's crazy to think about it. Like, there's somebody out there that knows so much about you, and you know nothing about them. It's a very wild feeling. Right. <laughs> right. A, a very wild feeling. So I think <laughs> most people, again, they under they admire. The fact that someone else is willing to do that, knowing that they they Can't aren't or won't, yeah. All right. So, um, how do, why do I even get on that anyway? Yeah, you, well, you smile like artists not want to stand out because it's like it's a part of the job. Either. Like you got to kind of get over that, right? Right. <laughs> and then that came from it was, it was derived from why they're willing to look at NFTs, yeah, right, in a certain way and do these experiences that they can already actually do, all right? So bringing that full circle again there's so many opportunities to do just cool stuff whatever your brand is right omarion's um doing this mind body soul type experience right but you could do you know gaming you can do music you might like watching certain movies and your fan base might be really deep into it like if you got a horror core audience and y'all are into horror movies yeah. like whatever that stuff stuff looks like there's so many possibilities. So if y'all can dig in, be more creative. Again, the beauty of this, right, is it actually is easier to sell this type of stuff than it is a regular show. Yeah. Right? It's the equivalent of when you have a merchandise brand that can stand on itself versus, hey, it's all my merch is just my face on it. Mm -hmm. Your audience really got to like you if it's that, right? But if your shirt is, but God is dope, right? Yeah. Like, let's say Toby and Wegway. I think I said that right. I don't know. God is dope would have been a great merch brand for him. Yeah. Right? All his stuff could say Toby, right? But a bigger brand for people that don't even know Toby would be God is dope. Right. And it's yeah. aligned with who he is and what the type of stuff that he speaks. So that's that example. It's a lot easier to sell that type of thing. You still get the money, right? Look, you can end up being on your own brands, marketing, right? almost looking like, they're like, who is this artist? Why do they have him showcased? Yeah, why is he on everything? <laughs> why, is he, why is he? And it just makes it seem like you got a sponsorship or whatever. And you're somebody. All right. So, like all those opportunities exist when you start to move outside of this space and place, but you can tie it back to your artistry where it makes sense and it creates new fans. And if it doesn't create new fans, it's at least creating new money. So I encourage y'all, yeah, y'all, y'all definitely take advantage of these opportunities, especially the way you can do it today. But we're gonna move on to another topic because Corey, you send in a really, really dope video. 